the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Several years ago, a popular book came out called Outliers. And in it, the author put forth a theory that to master a subject, to really become a professional at any skill or discipline or art, you had to invest about 10,000 hours. About 10,000 hours to really understand something thoroughly and fully and completely. And I want to take that theory one step further. You have to become a master of something, I believe, to make something very simple. You have to become so good and so uh, apt and so professional to really make it perfectly, elegantly, beautifully simple. For example, right, if you watch a, a cooking show or something, or if you see a great chef, a great chef who's mastered the French kitchen, right, mastered uh, all the cooking techniques around the world, someone who works at a three-star Michelin restaurant, maybe they're going to give him a fourth star for the first time, right, someone who is at the height of their game, and they'll add an egg on top. They make a perfect meal and add a perfectly poached egg. Now, an egg is simple. I make eggs every morning, right? And yet to make a perfectly elegant poached egg is the height of a professional chef, a display of the true passion and technique that they've honed over years and sweat equity, right? To make something simple, you have to become a master first. We think of Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan won this week the Nobel Prize in Literature. Bob Dylan is clearly a master of music. Clearly, he's ingested and taken on the great American songbook for himself. Bob Dylan was raised in Minnesota listening to the blues, listening to folk music, ingesting it, consuming it, becoming it. Through high school, he played with various bands. And in the early 1960s, he walked the streets of New York playing music. He played at every dive bar. He played at every little venue that they would have him, that they would allow him to take out his guitar for years. He did nothing but play music. And he became a master of it. He invested his 10,000 hours, and he, he went through music to the point where he was able to write the very simple lyrics, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Right? The answer is blowing in the wind. He's able to write a song so profound and so elegant because it's simple. And it endured, endured through civil rights, and endured through wars, and it endures today as a message of hope, right? Because it takes a master to write something so perfectly and elegantly simple. And the story from Genesis this morning is a story <coughs> of Jacob struggling with God. And Jacob, no doubt, has put in 10,000 hours wrestling and struggling. He's a master of struggle. Jacob was wrestling with his brother in the womb, Esau, right? As a young man, he struggled to find his place in the world and in a family where he was second best, which meant maybe nothing at all. He struggled with his father and getting attention from his father. He struggled with his brother. He fled. He struggled to marry the woman he loved and then married her sister too. He struggled with his wives and his 12 children and their two handmaids. He struggled with his father-in-law who would lie and steal and cheat from him. He struggled with his shepherds as he was trying to accrue wealth and build a name for himself. And finally, he comes home. He's about to meet his brother Esau again. Jacob and Esau haven't seen each other for 20 years. And Esau wants to kill him. And Jacob knows this is it. This is the last night. This is the ultimate struggle. He sends his family away. He sends his herds away. He's all by himself and lays down by the river Jabbok. And he knows this is the ultimate struggle for his life. And that night, he wrestles with God. That night, he grabs God by the shoulders and looks at him eye to eye, and they go toe to toe, and they fight throughout the night, and they wrestle with each other and struggle together, and Jacob refuses to quit. Jacob is so intent and passionate, and they're locked in such a relationship that he refuses to let go. Maybe God refuses to let go of him. And at the end, the angel says, you've wrestled with God and you have persevered. And he changes his name to Israel because Israel means he who struggles with God. The one who struggles with God. He's become a master of it. He's become a professional at it. He's an artist of struggling with God. And that's the story of the Israelites, the ones who become the people who struggle with God. 
They complain and grumble in the desert for 40 years as they wander towards the promised land. They struggle with God as they try to create a nation. They fight with their neighbors who are always coming in and taking and invading. They struggle to keep their nation. And they sit in ashes in the Babylonian exile wondering where that nation has gone and where God has gone. And they struggle with God. And this is good news for me because I struggle too. This is good news for me because I've spent a life struggling with God, with doubting, with having a hard time understanding faith and understanding why and where God is. I struggled when my parents got divorced. I struggled when my dad died as a young man. I struggled after graduating college not being able to find a job and then I struggled after I had a job. I struggled having children and then when my two week old baby was in the hospital for several weeks, right? I struggled today when my friends are sick and they get bad news. I struggle when my friends are dying and die. I struggle when people in my community are hurting. And I want to raise my fists up to God and say, I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't see you. I don't feel you. And where are you? I struggle to pray. And I'm a priest who is professionally supposed to pray. I struggle finding time just to make it out the door with two little girls, right? I struggle just making it to work during the day and getting home on time to pick them up. And I struggle. And it's because of those struggles and because of my doubts and because of the hard times I have in faith that I keep at it, that I open my Bible and I force myself to make time and I get on my knees and I lift up the people I love the most and I ask God about it. Because I want to be locked in that battle too. I want to be engaged with Him and I want to fight with Him and I want to hear answers. And I'm going to keep asking and I'm going to keep nagging until God starts to respond to me. And God does. And I feel like I put in my 10,000 hours and maybe I'm going to put in another 20 before it's all over. But I am a professional at struggling with God. And maybe that doesn't make sense to you. Maybe your life is perfect. Maybe you don't struggle. Maybe it's all good. Maybe you have the best family. Your kids are amazing. Your job is great. Everything is perfect and everything you touch turns to gold. And I celebrate you. Or maybe you're like the rest of us and you're barely dragging yourself into church on Sunday morning where you're barely holding it together when you don't know if you can even make it through the day or maybe even this hour and you're just glad to be here, right? And this isn't a weakness. This is our greatest strength. This is our greatest asset and perhaps the greatest gift that God gives us that he wants us to struggle with him. That God loves us so passionately, so intensely. God cares about us so deeply that He wants us to grab Him by the shoulders and look at Him in the eyes. He wants us to be like Job and throw our fists to heaven and cry out and complain and bother Him and nag Him. God wants to hear our struggles and God is big enough to take it. And in the end, maybe like Jacob, God will refuse to let us go. God holds on to us and walks with us and keeps us. Because God wants to be in that kind of relationship that's alive, it's a dynamic, that's fraught with parable. And yes, we can wrestle with them, but we can also celebrate the great joys of our life with God as well. And maybe we're called to be masters of struggle. Maybe we're called to get our doctorates in it. Maybe we're called to invest 10,000 hours in fighting with God so we can understand a very simple truth. So we can come to that place of great simplicity that's so elegant and beautiful and filled with grace. So that one day we can re truly, fully know deep down in our hearts that God loves us. That God is with us. And God will never let us go. Amen.